Hi, and welcome to the tutorial video introducing SimCoder automatic code generation for the F2833X floating point line of processors for from Texas Instruments. As a starting point of the video, we are going to use this PFC circuit uh, implemented with digital control uh, available from the examples folder. And we can simulate it and see what the waveforms look like. Let's look at the uh, output voltage and the uh, input voltage. So we can see the uh, output voltage here, the red line. It's uh, stabilizing right around 350 volts. And the peak to peak uh, AC input is plus minus 200. So now to set this circuit up so that we can translate the digital algorithm here into C code, we uh, are going to need to identify the signals that are passed between the control circuit in green and the power circuit in red. I'll just move this out of the way here a little bit so that we can see things a little clearer. We see three feedback signals. These are going to need to be processed by an analog to digital converter by the actual DSP. And we also see a PWM signal that's going to need to be generated by the by the DSP. Each one of these signals is going to have a pin assigned to it. And uh, what the automatic code generation will do is set those pins up for you and then translate this digital circuit, this digital control algorithm into code. So the first thing I'm going to implement is the analog to digital converter. I'll place the ADC block. <clears throat> now the ADC block has a couple of parameters associated with it. Um, the main ones we'll look at right now is the mode and the gain. The mode um, will set the coupling, so it's going to be AC or DC. We'll set these all to AC to start with. This is going to be a representation of the physical DSP, which also has the limitations on the inputs of these pins. In AC coupling, the max range is plus minus 1.5 volts, and in DC coupling, it's 0 to 3 volts. We're going to need to ensure that the feedback signals are within range for the ADC. Look, let's look again at the simulation. Let's remove these signals and let's add the feedback signals. We can see here that uh, all of these signals are outside of the 0 to 3 volt range for DC coupling or plus minus 1.5 volts for AC coupling. But this can be easily adjusted. We'll use AC coupling. So the input voltage and the feedback current can all be reduced by a factor of 10 to get them nicely within the, the plus minus 1.5 volt range. The output voltage needs to be reduced by a larger factor to get it underneath 1.5 volt for the max range. I'll divide the output voltage by 20 and the current and other and input voltage by 10. I will rejoin the video when it's all wired up. So now I have the ADC inserted into the signal paths for the feedback. I have put it in before the zero order hold, which defines the sampling frequency of the ADC. This has been set to 30 kHz. I have also adjusted the gains to 20, 10, and 10 as per the gain adjustments for the uh, sensors from the original implementation of the circuit. The next thing we need to do is convert the PWM generation compared to circuit with a block that will do that in the side of the DSP. I'll pull that to the side and disable it. And in the elements menu, I'm going to pull up a one phase PWM control block and place it into the circuit. 
and I'll wire it in. I have assigned uh, W as a hotkey for wiring things up. If you were unfamiliar with customizing your keyboard, it's the option is up in the options menu. Inside of the PWM block, we have a, a, a number of options available to us. Um, we can uh, select the mode of the of the PWM, whether or not we're going to use both channels. Since we're only using channel A, we'll do that. We can set the PWM source, leave that as one, and we can set the uh, frequency. In this case, it'll be 30K, which is the same as my triangular wave source, which also has a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 10 volts and a duty cycle of one, which for a triangular wave means that this is in fact a sawtooth waveform. So we will mimic those values here. So that was a peak-to-peak -peak value of 10 and a sawtooth waveform. We'll start high and we won't get it to trigger the ADC. So that's everything we need to set there. I've also uh, placed the hardware configuration and DSP clock blocks. These are also still found in, sim in the target menu down at the bottom here. So in the hardware configuration block, this is where we select the pin that the PWM signal will be generated on. I'll select uh, GPIO0 and I'll lock it. We can't select which pins the ADC is assigned to. Ports A and B are automatically set up to be ADC ports with analog inputs expected on the pins. The DSP clock has uh, defaults are 30 megahertz and 150 megahertz, which are fine for our simulation. And the last thing to set up is inside of simulation control. We need to select the hardware target that we're going to be generating code for, in this case, the F2833, and uh, we'll use RAM debug. And we'll also use the F28335. So now we're ready to simulate. Here we can see the results of our simulation. Again, our output voltage is, is settling nicely around 350 volts. And our feedback signals mimic those that we saw earlier with the original implementation. So this is now ready for automatic cogeneration. OK. Now, to generate the code, go up to Simulate and come down to Generate Code. And here is the code that we've generated. We can see the date stamp here, April 24th, 2014, at around 3.15, and uh, that it's been generated by version 9.3.3. And here's the code, the implementation of our control algorithm. And here's the main function down here. And it calls our initialization function, which sets up all the registers. And this is now ready to be uh, imported into Code Composer Studio and then flashed to a DSP, which I'll do in a different tutorial video.